Give me an headquarter. Say amen. Father, we thank you. We love you. We, we glorify you. We adore you. What a great God, a good God, a gracious God you are. That you give us opportunity to listen to you directly by your spirit revealing the scriptures unto us. We are praying that tonight your word will come afresh to everyone in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that you grant us the grace and the strength to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints in Jesus' name. That at this hour, at this time, after all these many years, we will not compromise the faith. We will not let down the faith, but in life, in action, in interaction, in our families, and everywhere we are, we will earnestly, positively, passionately contend for this faith in Jesus' name. We'll live for the Lord. We'll act in faith. And Lord, our lives will be glorifying unto you and bringing many people into the faith in Jesus' name. The entrance of your word brings light. I will pray that today you enlighten us to understand the word of God in Jesus' name. Impact in our lives. Result in our lives that the word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has blessed you. You can sit down. We're continuing our study of the epistle general of James. And now we come to James chapter 1 verse 9. In James chapter 1 verse 9, it says, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Look at verse 10. It says, but the rich in that he is made low because at the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Verse 11, and it says, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace the goodness, the beauty of the fashion of each passeth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Verse 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Those are the verses we're looking at today. The topic is the present, permanent, and perpetual exaltation of truly consecrated believers. Believers are those who are saved. Believers are those who have given their hearts, their life, unto the Lord. Believers are the people that have unreservedly, absolutely, completely, without any other thought, they have surrendered unto the Lord. They've repented of their sins, all their sins. They're not keeping any sin in them, and they're not practicing any sin in the secret, but they have committed and given themselves unto the Lord in total repentance, in true repentance, in scripture 
mutual repentance and they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to wash away all those sins, to forgive them all those sins, and to lean upon the Lord and live for the Lord in the grace of the Lord every time. Believers, these believers are so committed to the Lord day and night, and every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year, there is no moment they go back from the Lord. They are consecrated to the Lord. They are committed to the Lord, and they are giving to the Lord wholeheartedly that they will listen to him they will learn from him and they will do whatever he teaches them to do they don't have a double life they're not living like you know on Sunday there's sunshine and during the week there is weakness no but all the days they live consistently consecratedly committedly unto the Lord and there is uh, nothing in them contrary to the faith they possess says these are consistent Christians these are committed Christians and these are consecrated believers they have a present and a permanent and a perpetual exaltation that God has promised them and that promise will be yours in Jesus name and so the topic tonight the present permanent and perpetual exaltation of truly consecrated believers. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the present placement of temporal blessings in these end times. Number two, the profitable perseverance of the believers while enduring temptations. Number three, the promised price the promised crown, the promised reward for tried beneficiaries in endless triumph. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the present placement of temporal blessings in these end times. And let's go back to that again in James chapter 1 verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Verse 10, it says, But let the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Verse 11, it says, For the sun is no sun, risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace, the goodness, the beauty uh, of the of the fashion of it passes so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways we're told in first timothy chapter 4 and we're reading there from verse 1 it says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, they will no more be earnestly contending, positively contending, practically contending. They will no more be passionately contending for the faith. In the last days, some things will bring discouragement to people or they will be sidetracked to other issues, to other things that they are no more giving themselves to lifting up that faith, expanding that faith and extending that faith to other people. They will go back from the faith they depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils look at verse 2 in verse 2 it said they'll be speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their conscience seared with a hot iron and that means there, there are believers who are standing there are believers who are steadfast there are believers who keep to the way the Lord has given there are some other people uh, they, they were believers and they still think they are believers but they have departed from the faith they, 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 they are people uh, they now pursue material things they are pursuing the riches of the world and it says those people they will fade away like the grass the flower that fades away but we who know the Lord and love the Lord and keep to the Lord we have this present placement even of temporary blessings in these end 
times we're looking at three things here number one the wealth and promotion of the godly number two the withering and passing away of the grass number three the wastage and the perishing of their goodliness of their fashion of their beauty of the things they are concentrating upon now the goodness the beauty and the and the splendor will pass away look at number one number one the wealth and promotion of the godly the wealth and the promotion of the godly if you are godly that means the grace of god has come to your life that means you are a brother that means you're a sister that means you're a member of the family of god let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted we're told in romans chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 14 the brother of low degree he may not have too much of the things so count of the things that are tangible here in the world but look at him now in romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led of the spirit of god they are the sons of god he has the holy ghost leading him he has the holy spirit abiding in him he has the holy spirit guiding and leading and teaching and instructing what a great privilege he has the godly person that's the promotion we're talking about look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear you see that person that is called a brother and it says it's of low degree and the reason it says it should rejoice is he has not received the spirit of bondage the spirit that binds the people of the world and binds them to material things and binds them to material gain and binds them only to the earth and they are working for the dust and they are working for sand and they are not looking at the things in heaven but these people they don't have the fear of the people of the world but he have received the spirit of adoption that's the reason why it says the lowly brother the lowly sister the lowly child of god is exalted that he has received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father look at verse 16 in verse 16 it says the spirit himself bear it witness with our spirit that we are children of god and because we are children of god we can ask we can seek we can knock and whatever we need will be given unto us we may not have it in hand but we have it in the bank of heaven we have it in the presence of god in heaven who is our father and he says because now we're children and the spirit of god assuring us that we are the children of god and bearing witness with our heart that we're children of god we ask we receive we seek we find we knock the door is opened unto us for your father knows that ye have need of all these things all we need to do is seek ye for the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you because these are the things the gentiles are seeking and the gentiles concentrate on just that the material things but we are concentrating on the kingdom of god in heaven and everything we need is given unto us that's why it says the lowly brother appears lowly on earth but everything he needs is actually provided because of that he can rejoice look at verse 17 in verse 17 and if children then heirs heirs of god heirs heirs of god because now the wealth of heaven belongs to us and our portion he is the lord himself all the things of this world that the moss of the world and everything can destroy all that we leave their toys for them ours is the wealth that no moss or rust 
can destroy. And because of that, we appear to be brothers, sisters, members of the family of God, lowly, but actually we are promoted. And everything the Lord knows you have will come your way. Will come my way. And it says, if children, then ears, ears of God, and join each ears with Christ. If so be that ye suffer with him, that ye may also be glorified together. Suffer with him, persecution. Suffer with him, misunderstanding. Suffer with him, misrepresentation. But we're going to be glorified. Therein lies the wealth and the promotion of the God. Look at number two there. Number two is the withering and the passing away of grass. It says in James chapter 1 verse 10, it says, But the rich, the rich without God, the rich without grace, the rich without godliness, the rich that only has the goodliness of the world that is just like grass, the rich that only depends on things on earth, all he has, all he knows, all is done is for the world. And this world passes away, and the loss thereof, and the glory thereof, but only those that do the will of God will abide forever but the rich in that he is made low because of the flower of the grass he shall pass away and look at this we're looking at um, uh, Psalm 103 we're reading from verse 15 in Psalm 103 verse 15 as for man is days are as grass you see that as for man his days are as grass as a flower of the field so he flourisheth and then verse 16 verse 16 says for the wind passeth over it and it is gone the wind passeth over it and it is gone then the lord gives us light he gives us understanding. He gives us enlightenment because the people who don't have the light and the people who are not in the light, they're totally in darkness. They do not understand that man's life, so brief, like the grass of the field. The people that do not have the light, they're the people that are limited in their understanding. Everything they do, everything they think, everything they run after is only of this world because because they are in darkness, but the Lord gives us light to understand that the wind passeth over the grass and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know him no more, shall know it no more. That the reason we come to the Lord and we love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind, and because we're not concentrating on the things only in this life in first john chapter 2 reading here from verse 15 first john chapter 2 verse 15 love not the world don't concentrate on the world and don't glue your eyes your mind your gaze on the world don't give yourself to the world when you say you have given yourself to the Lord look not the world neither the things that are in the world the things that are in the world the wealth of the world the riches of the world the possessions of the world the sand and dust of the world the grass of the world not, not the world neither the things that are in the world it says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him verse 16 in verse 16 for all that is in the world the lost of the flesh and the lost of the eyes and the pride of life what makes them 
paper certificate, the pride of life. What makes them proud? The mode of transportation that they have. What makes them proud? The energy, the strength, physical, the thing they have, which is there today and is not there tomorrow. The position they have, the authority, human authority that they have, they think that is all. And they don't have heaven. They don't have salvation. They don't have the spirit of God bearing witness with their hearts. The children of God, the things they have that makes them proud, the pride of this life. They are not of the Father, but it's of the world. In verse 17, it says, And the world passeth away. Like the grass, the world passeth away. Like the goodliness of the things on earth, the world passeth away. Like the things the people give their hearts, they give their mind, they give all their attention to, the world passeth away. Like the possessions of the world is there now. If the next minute is blown away, the world passeth away. But he that doeth the will of God, abideth forever i will abide forever when all the things of this world when they have all gone because actually when we leave at a time of burial they'll not bury the account book with any of us they'll not bury all the money we stop in the banks they don't bury them with us all the houses and all the properties and everything like grass that fadeth away did not bury anything with us will go but if we have salvation if we have the faith in the lord if we have the confidence we have lived for the lord and we're expecting the crown of righteousness then we go and we rejoice forever and we abide forever we'll abide forever in jesus name look at number three here number three the wastage and the perishing of their goodliness the wastage how many people waste their lives the wastage how many people waste their beauty the wastage how many people waste their time their talent how many people waste all their effort all their ability the wastage and the passing away of their godliness that's why it says in james chapter 1 verse 11 it says for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but it withereth the grass all the things that you know the the, the store in a secret place and they say i'm going to enjoy that for many years to come all of a sudden death knocks at their door as they are saying my soul take your ease eat and drink because he had so much possession then the lord said thou fool this night your soul will be required of you and whose will all this is be that you have gathered together so you see that is rich in the things of this world and it's not rich in grace it's not rich towards god it's not rich in godliness all he has all he can point to is the grass that fadeth away and it says for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth and the grace the goodness and the beauty and the pleasure of the fashion of it perishes so also shall the rich man the rich man who does not know god the rich man has position on earth does not have a place in heaven so shall also the rich man fade away in his 
ways. I pray you will not be like that. I will not be like that. Hey, look at Luke chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 12, verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Plentifully. That's what hinders some people. They cannot come to study the Bible with us once a week like this because the ground of that rich man has brought forth plentifully. That's what happens to some people. They've got one degree. They, they, they are running for another degree. They've got one doctorate. They're running for another doctorate. That's why they cannot study the Bible. The ground of a rich man brought forth plentifully. That's why some people cannot give themselves to learning the word of God because they have an award here, they have another award there and people are calling them here and all that they're running after, all those things are like the grass that fades away. And when death comes and when the unexpected comes, they leave all those things and they go to a lost eternity. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. The fruits are so many. The fruits of learning. The fruits of working. The fruit of earning, the fruit of amassing, and the fruit of just gathering and gathering and gathering, they have no time. They can read a hundred books in a year. They have a goal. I read two books every week. And I, you know, I have to do that. I read on business. I read on finance. I read on human relationships. I read on this. I read on that. They have no time to read the one single book that will determine their destiny. The one single book that will pave way for them in eternity. But they read and read and read. They labor and labor. They study and study. They work and they work. And there is no time to do the work that the Lord will reward them for in eternity. All the work they are doing is what will perish at the end of their day. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? Look at verse 18. In verse 18 then he said, this will I do. It's a man of planning. It's not planning for heaven. It's planning for the harvest on earth. It's a man of uh, thinking. It's not thinking of heaven. It's thinking of what he has here on earth. It's a man of uh, activity. A purposeful activity. But the purpose is only for the things of this world. Think about your life. What do you plan for? What do you aim at? What are you running after? And what do you spend your night thinking and working on? Well, all those things might be good temporarily. Are you thinking about heaven? Are you thinking about holiness? Are you thinking about the grace of God that should increase in your life and take you on to heaven when you die? This man had no thought of grace, no thought of God, no thought of godliness, and no thought of going to the great beyond to be with the Lord when he dies. He says, this will I do. I will pull down my pants and build greater. I'll get, you know, better engineers that constructed this other one. And now we're going to have a better place to store everything that I'm there. Will I bestow all my fruits and my goods? Then in verse 19, and I will say to my soul, he knew that he had a soul. But he didn't make any room for that soul, any forgiveness for that soul, any salvation for that soul, any cleansing for that soul, any preparation for that soul to be with God in eternity. All he could say to the soul, I have these material things. Now look at what he said. He said, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. 
man and do you know you have many years i have a health plan i do medical tests every time and I make sure that I am fit. And whatever, I tell them the money is there. And whatever health I need you people, put your heads together and put your research together and give me the most modern uh, solution to my health challenge. And because he thought he had everything made, he said, I have much goods, but laid off for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Verse 20 now, God has the final say. I was waiting for an amen there. Yeah. On the people of the world, God has the final say. On the people who think, is there God, is there no God, never mind. God has the final say. On the people who kill themselves on projects, 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 God has the final say. On the people who are running and running after the things of this world, God has the final say. On the thoughtless, they are not thinking, where would they spend eternity? God has the final say but God said unto him thou fool this night I was thinking of many years this night thy soul shall be required of thee then whose shall those things be which thou hast Provided. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself, for himself, for himself. And there are some so called believers too. They don't think of the Bible, they learn doctrine. The doctrine is in the head, it doesn't come to the heart. They're stacking away money. Money here in their country, money there overseas, money everywhere. And there is need. There's need of preaching the gospel. There's need of helping your neighbor. There is need of being whatever needs to be done so that more souls will come into the kingdom. Uh -uh. They don't think of that money, money, money. They stack it away over there. And the thing is uh, growing and expanding. And they don't think, they don't think, even those who are getting older and older and older, they don't think that when death comes, they leave all those riches suddenly. And whose will those things be that they are provided for themselves? They're not rich towards God. There are people, they hear about the rapture. The rapture can take place and you say, give me the next word. They say, any time. They know that in their head. They don't know that in their heart. All the money you stack in all the banks and everywhere, you will not touch it. Even when your wife is sick, you will not touch it. Even when the children need this and that, you want that thing to reach a million. I want to be a millionaire. You want that thing to reach a billion. I want to be a billionaire. If Christ comes at any time, if the rapture takes place at any time, you're not going to take the billions away to heaven if you're able to make it at all because you will not take it away when the rapture comes at any time. Who will spend it? It will be in the hand of the Antichrist after you are gone. If you go, if you don't go, if the rapture takes place and you remain here, all that money is there in the bag, it's there everywhere. I store it and I take shares, shares there, shares there. If you don't make the rapture, even that money you cannot spend freely because you have to take the mark of the Antichrist before you can buy or sell. And if you take the mark of the Antichrist 
with all your money, whatever you buy, whatever you sell, you're doomed and damned and condemned forever. This is the reason we need to think and we need to understand that the goodness of the rich people, if they don't have God, if they had God and they forget God and they are running after riches, so is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, the profitable perseverance of believers while enduring temptations. We're looking at James chapter 1. We're looking at verse 12, first part of verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that receives temptation. Blessed is the man that still stands firm and still holds himself up over under the pressure of temptation. We're looking at three things here. Number one, resisting the tempter with the sword of the world. Number two, refusing appealing temptations in supplication with willingness. Number three, rejecting attractive temptations with the steadfastness of the warrior. Look at number one. Number one, resisting the tempter with the sword of the world. The devil is the tempter and he was so audacious that he could even come to Christ and tempt Christ. And if a tempter, the tempter, will tempt Christ, we Christians, who do we think we are, that the devil will not tempt us, no matter how high, no matter how much exposed, no matter how intelligent, and no matter how strong you think you are, if Christ was tempted, you cannot escape being tempted. But God give you the grace to say no. God give me the grace to say no. They give us the grace in Jesus' name. He tempted Eve and tempted Adam. And if he was so courageous, so daring to test the first man that did not have seen in his life the false woman that did not have seen in her nature if he was so daring how do we think that today he'll just leave us alone is the tempter and he doesn't have respect or honor for anyone he brings temptation and it is ours to understand temptation will come it may not come in the direction you are thinking. So if you're looking at one direction, Satan the tempter does not concentrate only on one direction in temptation. He has a thousand and one ways in which he brings temptation. And it is ours to understand that the grace of God is available whatever direction it comes from your will overcome. We're looking at Matthew chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he calls him by the right title. The tempter is the devil, is Satan, is Lucifer, is the prince of this world, is the God of this world. Now he came as a tempter. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. The Lord Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. He was now hungry. The devil will bring temptation from the direction of what you are hungry for. If you are hungry for power, he will bring temptation that way. 
If you are hungry for position, he'll bring temptation from that way. If you are hungry for money, he'll bring your temptation that way. If you are hungry for the pleasure of the flesh, he'll bring temptation not that way. If you are hungry for popularity, he'll bring temptation from that area. If you are hungry for knowledge, 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 and you are crying after the knowledge of this world, world he'll bring the temptation from that area and when he came he said if thou be the son of God command that these stones be made bread look at verse 4 in verse 4 but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth forth out of the mouth of God. When you know the word and you know that you live by the word, the word of promise, you live by that word, the word of power, you live by that word, the word of prophecy, you live by that word, the word of his proclamation, you live by that word. When you live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, you can easily throw the sword at the tempter, you'll flee away from you in Jesus name. We're looking at verse 5 in verse 5 then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple. Verse 6 in verse 6 and said unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down for it is written. Okay. And Jesus quoted the Bible at him and he said I know the Bible too Satan knows the Bible although he will twist it he will turn it upside down he will take something out of the word he will add something to the word and if you don't know the word in reality he'll easily deceive you it's just like sometimes you meet some of these people outside and they're not born again but they can quote the bible although they quote it wrongly but they still quote the bible the tempters and the followers of the tempters in our places of work in our marketplace, in our community, even in our extended families, when they want us to do something and we're saying no, and they say, but why? The Bible says, and then they bring out a word, don't listen to them, don't be deceived because of their misquotation of the Bible. And so the devil said that for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Look at verse 7, verse 7, Jesus said, unto him understand jesus the light of the world he quotes the bible from the angle of being the light of the world and satan is uh, the devil and is the prince of the power of darkness he quotes the bible from the angle of darkness it's in darkness it doesn't have grace it doesn't have godliness it doesn't have the gospel all it can do is quote you know the bible out of context out in darkness but because jesus is the light the light of the word came and jesus said it is written again thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says again the devil he will not give up so quickly if you overcome one temptation don't think that is so everything is finished now no he may come back again maybe that day maybe another day maybe another week and he'll come from another angle again the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them jesus will be the king of kings amen 
and the Lord of Lords. The kingdoms of this world will soon become the kingdom of our God and his Christ. Jesus knew all those things belonged to him, but the devil wanted him to take the kingdoms from him, the devil, not from the Father, God in heaven. Maybe there are some things that legitimately belong to you, and the Lord has promised you, and you know you are going to have, yes, you will have. You will have. But before that point of possession, the devil may come and offer it to you. Don't make the mistake and say, after all, the Lord has promised me, and I know it will be mine, and even if it comes from an idol worshiper, even if I have uh, to, you know, bow down to them before I have no problem. Uh, there's problem. There is problem. What God intends to give, you must not get from the devil. It says over here, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them look at the next verse verse 9 and says unto him all these things will i give thee if you're looking for you know prosperity at any cost money at any cost wife at any cost children at any cost property at any cost if you want it so seriously and so definitely that you say i'll pay any price you may pay the price with your soul with your eternity you may pay that price with your destiny the thing is leave it in the hands of god and let god give at the time he wants to give it says and he said to him all these things will i give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me verse 10 in verse 10 then said jesus unto him get thee hence get out of my way i thought you would say that get thee hence satan for it is reaching jesus always at the reaching one and he knew that it will be accomplished as it has been reaching it is reaching thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou serve amen yes. you resist the devil he will flee from you we're looking at number two number two we're looking at refusing appealing temptations in supplication with willingness supplication with willingness supplication is prayer the willingness is really you don't want to fall into that temptation really you desire that the grace of God will remain in your life and the pleasure of the flesh. The pleasure of things present will not cloud your vision, will not take heaven away from you. And so you have the willingness when you pray. If you are praying and God knows you don't have the willingness, you are wasting God's time. He will not allow you to waste his time. You are praying. You want to overcome. You are praying. You want to have the power to receive. You, you are praying. You want to be free from all the snares of the devil. If you are willing, it will be so. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak the spirit is willing because your spirit knows the consequence of falling into temptation 
The spirit is willing because you're saved, you're born again. You've given yourself to the Lord. And the spirit says, isn't it a good thing to remain and abide as a member of the family of God? The spirit is willing. The spirit is willing. I'll make you officials of men. You know the promise you're given. And you know, if you're going to achieve, if you're going to possess the fulfillment of the promise, you have to remain with him. The spirit is willing because you know without holiness no man shall see the Lord. But now the flesh is weak. The flesh is not, not at the same level as the spirit. The flesh desires these things that the flesh contacts in the world. The spirit is for heaven. But the flesh is looking for what is pleasing in the world. And because of that gap between the spirit and the flesh, that's why you are there in prayer. You see, the flesh must come to the same level, to the same position, to the same desire as my spirit. And when you do that, and your flesh comes to that same level, at the willing spirit, that's when you overcome easily. You will overcome. I will overcome. When we refuse those appealing temptations, will overcome in Jesus' name. Look at number three. Number three, we're looking at rejecting attractive temptations with steadfastness as a warrior, as a soldier. Because if we don't resist and if we don't act like a warrior, all those things may draw us. Look at Luke chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 13. Luke chapter 8, verse 13. Day on the rock, a day which when they hear, receive the word of joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe. For a while believe. And then it says, and in time of temptation, they fall away. For a while they believe, and while they believe during that time, they are not making their soul, they are not making their mind to concentrate on the Lord and to be strengthened in the Lord and to prepare for the evil day of temptation that might come. And when the temptation comes, the jolly good Christians, they come to church, they go back home, everything is fine. It's like they are walking in the air, but now temptation comes suddenly. And they do not have the roots. They are not grounded so that they will overcome. That will not happen to you. You will overcome in Jesus' name. It tells us in verse 14. In verse 14, And that which fell amongst us are they which when they have heard, they go forth and are choked with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. The people that do not get themselves grounded, established in the world, that they're just like here and there, and the winds can easily blow them off their feet, that because of the cares of this life, cares of this life, cares of this life, and the deceitfulness of riches. You know, there, somebody is bringing something to them. You know, this deal, this one will go through. This one is not like all those people that come to deceive you. This one, if you put in this amount, it will double. I'm telling you, in two weeks, you are going to have this. And because they have. The deceitfulness of riches bugging them. They have the deceitfulness of riches following after them. They fall into it. 
and they lose everything they've got they gamble with everything they've got they might even gamble with their souls the prince of the power of the air sends his emissaries to them come into covenant if you come to this covenant you know in life this is where you'll be and that's what you'll be and because of the deceitfulness of their own ambition they fall into that they fall into temptation and then they realize they've sold their heart to the devil and then it says because of the pleasures of this life pleasures of this life would you be surprised some people that say they are born again the pleasures of drinking alcohol beer the pleasures of pornography that thing just interests them and they cannot go without the pleasures of this life the pleasures of drinking smoking something that will put them on high the pleasures of this life whatever the pleasure is because of that temptation they bear no fruit to perfection i pray it will not happen to you i look in at first timothy chapter 6 reading from verse 9 first timothy chapter 6 reading from verse 9 but they that will be rich the people that say i look at that person we came out of school the same year look at where he is and look at the kind of car he's riding because of that they say i will be rich look at this woman retired from office the same time what has she done? Why is she making it like this? Now, I'm going to concentrate quality time. I'm going to have what she has. Look at this professional person. And we came out of, you know, the professional training at the same time. Look at what they have. Look at what they are riding. And look at the places they can easily travel to. Whatever happens, I will be there. The people that will be rich, by all means, by whatever means, it says they fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful laws which drown men in destruction and perdition. That what drown when somebody is in the river too deep for his height too wide for his strength and too dangerous for his little wisdom and he's drowning and the people cannot come to hell because they do not know how to swim to the point they can help the drowning man he drowns in the sea he drowns in the ocean his life comes to an end and there are people they're not drowning in the sea they're drowning in destruction and perdition they've gone so far they've gone so low they've gone so wide they've got all these connections they've committed themselves in their in their pursuit of riches and now how can they come out they've discovered this sin will lead to covenant of the devil with darkness and they have said i will give this if you give me this their life is already now given to the hands of the devil because they'll be rich by all means we're not only talking about people in the world we're talking about people even on the pulpit they want a large crowd and they want many people to be following after them they want to have a name a name on earth that that religious clergy that christian preacher is up there and would you know how they go in secret and then they sell their souls and they sell their future and they sell their destiny into the hands of the devil 
do it for me, do it for me, whatever, whatever. If we do it for you, you will die at this age. What does that matter? If I have what I'm looking for, give me something big that before I go, people will never stop talking about me. And because they want to be rich in a kind of, uh, you know, profession of religion. And so they sell themselves, they drown, they drown in perdition and destruction look at verse 10 verse 10 for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have edged from the face and pierced themselves with many sorrows it will not happen to you it must not happen to you you're on your way to heaven don't be sidetracked, looking here, looking there, how to get this, how to grab that. Heaven is enough for you. The glory of heaven, the beauty of heaven, the enjoyment of heaven, that's enough. Don't allow anything of this mundane world to sidetrack you. You will not perish by the wayside. We're coming to point number three here. Point number three, the promised price, the promised reward, the promised crown for tried beneficiaries in endless triumph. We're coming to uh, James chapter 1. We're reading from verse 12. Blessed is the man. That man is here tonight. That woman is here tonight. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. The Lord has promised to us that love him will not miss it in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, reversing the cravings of thoughtless and trampled beasts. There are beasts, they are men, but their passion is like the passion of the beast. There are men or women, the desire, their drive is like the desire and the drive of the beast. We need to reverse that. By grace, you reverse it in Jesus' name. Number two, renewing the consecration of trusted and uh, tested believers. Number three, receiving the crown of the tried, triumphant bride. Number one, in number one, reversing the cravings of thoughtless, trampled beasts. In Jude chapter 1, only one chapter there, Jude 1, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. It's talking about people because it talks about speaking evil of those things they know not and what they know naturally is okay about people as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves the things they know they corrupt themselves the knowledge they have they corrupt themselves the experiences they have they corrupt themselves the contacts they have well, the world, they corrupt themselves. The things they possess, they use them to corrupt themselves. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished 
and again saying of Corey, look at verse 12, these are spots in your feast of charity. They mingle, they mix with the people, children of God, charitable people of God. Born again, children of God, converted children of God, and the sanctified, holy children of God, they mingle in our midst, but they have another heart, they have another mind. And when they have the chance, they speak evil of leadership. They speak evil of the dignitaries. They speak evil of the things they know. And the ones they don't know, instead of saying, I don't know, they speak evil of those things. It says they go in the way of Cain, Korah, Balaam. And then it goes on to say, their sports in a feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are, without water, carried about of weeds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by roots. In verse 13, verse 13, reaching waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Have you found that somebody is supposed to be a believer? And then when he gets talking, foaming out uncontrollably, the dirty things in his heart, the suspicions in his heart, and the kind of corruption that is stored inside him. You say, hold it now. <laughs> Be quiet now. It's senseless. It cannot control. Once it starts forming out all those things, there's no end to it. Not born again. If he was born again before, he's not gone back. He's dead again in trespasses and in sins. Twice dead. He was dead. He became born again. He was quickened, saved. Then he backslid again, dead again. The second time, terrible. Twice dead. No fruit. No joy. No evidence of salvation. Raging waves of the sea, the temper, the anger, the things that come out as the eyes bulge out in anger. You say, but it's supposed to be a Christian. It's supposed to be a believer. No. Grace gone completely. And it says, it's foaming out its own shame. And it's like wandering star. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That will not be my portion. The Lord help all of us. Total change, transformation like great children of God. There's nothing to form out anymore. We don't have a religious satanic epilepsy. Those who have religious uh, satanic epilepsy, those are the people that foam out, foam out, foam out. And then after they've you know, done all the foaming out, they become so ashamed, they don't know what they're going to do again. We're coming to number, number two here. Number two is renewing the consecration of tested, trusted Believers will come back to the Lord and will renew our consecration completely unto the Lord. Philippians chapter 3, we're reading from verse 7. In Philippians chapter 3, looking at verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. The, the kind of things a believer has. That in the unbelieving days, I can talk myself into 
taking anything, getting anything from anybody. Those things that were gained to me, I count them now laws. A man that can, you know, no matter the woman, her beauty, her position, her status, I have this knack, I have this gift. I can talk her to anything, to my gain. The things that were gained to me, I count them now as loss. The woman that would say, it's only if I don't want him. If I want him, I can get him. I just have that natural talent. And no matter how reserved they are, how guarded they are, if I want to get him, that's, that's me, that's my gain. When you become a believer, the consecration we have, and that's why we don't fall into temptations, we now regard them as dung and dross. It says, the things, what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. The one that will say, if I want to get money from anybody, anybody, I have that ability to talk them into it. And the way I position myself and tell them the lies I want to tell them, they cannot shake it up. It will be too good for them to miss. That's the gain you had in the world. Now you come to Christ. The consecration we have now is that deliberately we give up all those things. What things were gained to me? Those I counted loss for Christ. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss. Why? For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but down, that I may win Christ. Look at the next verse there, verse 9. It says, and be found in him not having my own righteousness, not having my own a kind of degraded gift I've been using. And it says, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And in verse 10, that I may know him, saved, I know him, I want to know him more, sanctification, that I may know him, I know him as the sanctifier, I want to know him more, I want to know him as the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, I know him and baptize, I want to know him as the giver of the gifts of the Spirit, I know him. I want to know him more as the power of God in man. I know him. I want to know him as my giver, as my supplier, as the one that makes me steadfast even in the most dangerous situation that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We're renewing a consecration every time. We're reversing the cravings of the flesh and we're concentrated on him. Number three, number three, we're looking at receiving the crown of tried triumphant bride. 
receiving the crown. You receive a crown. You will wear the crown. All that happens today in temptation and trial, you will overcome. And then on that day, look at the glory, look at the splendor, and look at the greatness of where the Lord will bring you to when you stand within among the angels and sanctified souls, saints in heaven. You'll be wonderful. You'll be a star shining forever and ever in Jesus' name. But you know, at this time now, we need to endure temptation. At this time now, we want to get engaged in the work of the Lord. So that when he comes, yours, mine, will be the reward in Jesus' name. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Watch thou in all things. Pit falls there. Watch thou in all things. And pit holes there. Watch thou in all things. A ditch over there. Watch thou in all things. A tempter. A temptress over there. Watch thou in all things. And difficulties and trials and things that could easily trip anyone there. Watch thou in all things. Watch over your life. Watch over your language, watch over your tongue, watch over your situations, watch over every circumstance, every situation you find yourself, watch over all those challenges and watch over whatever crisis. When a crisis comes up, watch. Don't just talk, don't just act, look before you leave. Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Are there afflictions for the evangelist? Uh-huh, yes. Endure. Are there afflictions for the believer? Endure. Are there afflictions for the soul winner? Endure. Are there afflictions for the Christian worker, for the Christian man, for the Christian woman? Watch and endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist do the work of a soul winner do the work of an harvester make full proof of thy ministry verse 6 in verse 6 for i am now ready i pray when your time comes you'll be ready uh, how can we get ready when our time comes be ready every day be ready every night be ready every time what if he comes tonight? Are there things I should make right that I have not made right? What if he comes tonight? Are there attitudes I bear, attitudes I wear that I need to turn around, make it bright, make it positive, make it practical? Are there things in your life? Are there things in my life that we need to say? Christ should not meet me in this condition when he comes. And he can come anytime. Because of that, be ready. He says, I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. He is living, this is a man living in the light. And because he was living in the light, there was no shady thing, there was no secret thing, there was no dark spot. He lived in the light of Christ every time. And because of that, he said, the light would have shown me if there was anything to be taken care of. But now, I am ready. I've been walking in the light and talking in the light and living in the light and behaving in the light and producing in the light because I walk in the light of a sunshine. He says, I'm now ready and the time of my departure is at hand. He said in verse 7, in verse 7, I have fought a good fight, not a bad fight. Fighting against Satan, that's not a bad fight. Fighting to 
earnestly contend for the faith was delivered unto the saints. Not a bad fight. Fighting the beast at Ephesus. That's not a bad fight. Fighting all the corruption of the flesh so that you live righteously godly in this present world that's not a bad fight fighting the flesh and fighting whatever will pull you down again that's not a bad fight i fought a good fight i have i have finished my course i have kept the faith look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. When you, when you come to the end of the journey, the end of the race, and you look back and you say, by the grace of God, you received the faith, you kept for the faith, you contended for the faith, you defended the faith, you lay by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you, and you were abiding consistently constantly in that faith you didn't sleep away into unbelief now you say there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them unto all them they them are they there tonight I said, are we there tonight? And to all them that love is appearing. A crown of righteousness, a crown of life, the price and the reward of constant, consistent commitment to the Lord is waiting for every one of us. Waiting for you. Waiting for the overcomers. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord himself will help you. In all the circumstances and situations, you might find yourself that the Lord will help you. You have to be sure of your salvation. Be born again. Repentance. You've left the path of sin. You've left the way of sin. You've left the practice of sin. You've left all those pollutions, all those pleasures of the flesh. You have confessed, you have repented, and you have said, Lord, I need forgiveness, I need salvation. Make sure that salvation is still intact. Talk to the Lord. Do you know the day you got saved? you know how you got saved? you know what the grace of God, you remember? What the grace of God did in your life. When you got saved, remember? Recollect? Thank God for that. If you can't remember, get serious before the Lord. Repent of whatever is causing the doubt. Am I saved? Am I not saved? Remember, recall, recollect. Bring yourself to God unreservedly. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This can be the day. Delivered from sin. This can be the day. When we're saved, our mind, our heart, our intention, our attention, everything is on the Lord. We live for the Lord. We don't live for people. Whether they are there or not, our commitment is unto the Lord.
however lowly we are in this world we don't allow the loneliness to make us sin or do anything contrary to the grace of God abiding in us we know that he gives us grace the riches of his grace he grants unto us anywhere we are we know we're the children of God we have the Holy Spirit guiding, leading, witnessing within us we know that we are heirs together with him heirs together with Christ because we are now children of God and we know whatever we need we don't have to get into temptation to get anything we ask we seek we knock at the door and he always opens to us and we know we have a place in heaven what lifted to sit in heavenly places where Christ he has exalted us and we're truly consecrated committed believers and it preserves us profitably the kingdom of God temptations come And we do not yield like in the old days of sinfulness. By grace, we have reversed all those cravings of the world. You're no more falling and rising, falling and rising. A person like that will be lost forever. Christ comes anytime. Happens to be the time he has fallen again. No steadfastness. No consistency. That will show the abiding grace of God in his life now you can resist the devil Christ the overcomer lives on the inside of you and you have overcome them little children for greater you see that is in you than he the tempter that is in the world don't allow concentration on the things of this world To make you a fool in eternity. Crying had I known. Weeping had I known. Don't allow the pool of the world, the pool of riches. 
the pool of the flesh to drag you down, down until you drown in destruction and perdition. Come away, come out, stand firm, be totally given permanently unto the Lord. Renew your consecration. The consecration of the good old days. Renew the consecration. And you will receive the crown of life. Don't take your eyes away from the crown, your mind away from the crown. Here, something good is waiting for you every day. As you stay with the Lord, steadfast in the Lord. And there, on the other side, the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, the crown of glory waiting for you. You will not miss your crown in Jesus' name. You will not miss your place in heaven in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Father, thank you for your children. Thank you for our brothers and sisters. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you for their desire to keep on serving you until the very end. Help their decision help their desire help their devotion and grant them grace that will match every challenge of their lives in Jesus name make them stand make them steadfast they will not look back they will not fall and when temptations come from any direction, in any way, the grace and the strength and the power to stand and to overcome, give everyone in Jesus' name. No one who has heard your words today will be lost eventually. Life in every life. Light in every life, the love of God in every heart. And Lord, every day, whatever comes each day, will live victoriously, steadfastly, righteously, godly, graciously, in Jesus' name. And if there are needs in any life that the devil is trying to capitalize on, I'll give you this, I'll give you this. Lord, I pray this very day, solve the problems of your people in Jesus' name. And always give everyone, my brother there, my sister there, always give everyone what they ask of you to make them live satisfactorily in Jesus' name. The strength of God abide in your life. The goodness of God abide in your life. And the joy of salvation never leave you in Jesus' name. You will continue until the end. And at last, God will bring you to that place. You'll have the crown of life. The crown of righteousness. And the crown of glory. Your expectation here, your expectation hereafter will not be cut short. Fulfill your good desires on all your children, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.